Welcome to the video solutions of Code Drift. Hi everyone. So today in this video, I will be discussing the problem trip backpack. Okay. So the problem says that Elias and Bob are planning for a picnic trip. For the trip, Bob started filling his backpack with n positive integers. Okay. And Bob was filling his bag with random positive integers, which Elias did not like. So Elias wanted a backpack having maximum possible number of distinct integers. Bob did not like this, but as Elias' best friend, he allowed her to either decrease or increase each integer in the backpack by one, or not do anything. Okay, so whatever. So if there are n elements, if there are n elements in your backpack, then for every element, you can either just left it as it is, or you can decrease it by one, or you can increase it by one. So these are the three things that you can do over each and every element which is present in your backpack. Okay. Now, Elias wanted to know what is the maximum number of distinct integers possible if she did the operations optimally. So we have to find out what can be the maximum number of distinct integers that we can get out of this. So let us now consider an example. So let's say if our array consists of five elements, which are two, four, five, two, and four, and we have to count what can be the maximum number of distinct elements which we can obtain out of this array. Okay. So let us say we just decrease this two by one. So now this two will get one. Okay. Then we would having a distinct element as one. Then uh, there is a two out uh, two there. Okay. Now you can decrease this four by one. So you will get three, then four, and then five. So we won't be changing four and five. Let us say. So what we are getting now? We are getting one. Then this is three. This is five. This is two, and this is four. So as you can see, there are five distinct elements. Okay, obviously this is the maximum possible because in an array which consists five elements, the maximum number of distinct elements can be five only, and we are able to get five elements by doing operations like this. Okay, so the answer for this case would be five. Let us now consider an another example. So let's say if our array consists of four elements, all of which are one. So what can be the maximum element? Uh, distinct elements. So you see, if you just decrease this one. You will get zero, right? Then let us say we don't touch this one. So let it be as it is. Now for this one, you can increase it by one. So it, let us say it changed to two. Now for this one, it does not matter whether you decrease it, increase it, or left it as it is. It will never be counted as a distinct element. Why? Because if you just leave it, leave it as it is. There is already a one previously. If you decrease it, zero, zero is already there. And if you increase it by one, you will get two. But two is already counted as one of the distinct element. So it does not matter what you do with this one. Uh, like the number of distinct element at max will remain always three. Okay. So the answer for this case would be three. Okay. So now let us try to see an optimal approach for solving it. So, so basically what we have to do, we have to maximize the count of unique elements. Okay. So obviously, if you want to find the maximum number of unique elements, so the order of elements does not matter then. Okay. And whenever the order of elements does not matter, it is very often useful to sort the data then, because then whenever you sort a data, you can see some of its interesting properties. So what we will do, we will basically sort our data. And by sorting, what we will have. So after you sort your array, your array will look like a1 to like this okay so each element is greater than or equal to its previous element so what we will do we will basically follow a greedy strategy we will try to make each element as small as possible since it allows more elements to the right to its right to become unique okay <coughs> so let us understand it through an example so let us say that our array consists of five elements two four five two four so as a first step we will sort it so we will sort it so after sorting, you will get two, two, four, four, five. Okay. So at the very beginning, what you will do, you will simply reduce the first element of this array by one. So this will now become one. Okay. And you also know that if the array contains non-zero elements, then uh, your number of unique elements, let us call it as your count. So the count of unique elements will be at least one. Okay, so when we consider the very first element, we will simply say the count will always be equal to one and that unique element will be the first element itself. Now what we will do, we will also maintain a hash map for storing which of the elements we have already encountered such that whenever we encounter a new element, we will increment the count of unique elements. So we will put this one into our hash map. So we will say that, okay, one has been seen. 
now we next we move to the next element so we are now at this element okay so we again try to make it smaller as possible so how we can make it smaller by reducing it by one so if we reduce it by one we will be having one but we find that one has already been seen since it is in our hash map so it means reducing it by one is not useful so what we do then we just now let it be as it is so if we just don't increase or decrease it then it remains two only and we see that two is not in our hash map so it means that by leaving it as it is the number of unique elements will increase by one so we just increase it by one so the count of unique elements now become equal to two and uh, we also say that okay two we also put two in our hash map so it means two has been seen so either you can use hash map or hash set as well okay so basically hash map is unordered map in c plus plus and hash set is basically an unordered set in c plus plus okay so they allows you <coughs> they allows you order of one check to look whether some element has been seen or not okay so after investigating this two we move ahead so we are now at four we again try to reduce it by one so if you reduce it by one it will become three we see that three has not been seen so we'll simply reduce it by one so it becomes three and count becomes incremented by one so count becomes three and we also just store it in our hash map okay so we say that okay three has been seen we next move to the next element which is four if we try to reduce it by one three three is already in our hash map so reducing it is not uh, reducing it by one is not useful so we just leave it as it is so <coughs> if we just leave it as it is so it is four we check whether four is in our hash map or not four is not in uh, not in our hash map so we put it in our hash map or also and also increase the count by one so count becomes four okay then we move to the next element which is five we again try to reduce it by one since four is in our hash map reducing it is not useful so we just leave it as it is then it is five so five is not in our hash map so our count will get incremented by one and we will put this five into our hash map so as you can say ultimately we are getting five so it means at max we can get five unique elements so let us consider this example so a is given as four times one okay now the first thing that we will do we will first of all sort it okay so if you sort it you will get one 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 okay it will remain same uh, then what we can do we can just decrease the first element so it will become then zero one 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 and we will just put this into our hash map okay so zero we will put this zero in our hash map and count will be equal to one right now we will just iterate from this index okay so we are at this index so first of all we check whether one minus one that is zero is in our hash map or not so it is so then we check whether this element is in our hash map or not so we see it is not so we will put it in our hash map and increase the count so count becomes two and then we move ahead so we are now at one we again check if one minus one that is zero in our hash map or not so zero is in our hash map then we check whether one is in our hash map or not so one is also in hash map then we check whether one plus one that is two is in our hash map or not so two is not in our hash map so we just put this two in our hash map and increment the count by one so count become three then we again move ahead so we are again at one we first of all check whether one minus one is in hash map so it is that one is also in hash map and one plus one two is also in hash map so we cannot do anything so at the end we can see that uh, the number of distinct element will be at max three so let us look at the algorithm or a kind of pseudo code for it so As what we first step our algorithm we will first of all sort our initial array so we will sort our initial array okay so this should be the very first step so first you sort it and then you will follow these steps right First of all we will initialize our count count with one and we will also decrement the first element of our array by one and then put that a of zero into our hash map okay then we iterate for every index from one to n minus one we check if a of i minus one is in our hash map or not if it is not in our hash map we simply decrease our ai by one then increase the count of unique elements by one and put this modified ai into our hash map okay otherwise we check if ai is in our hash map or not if ai is not in our hash map then we again increment the count of unique elements and then put ai into our hash map otherwise we check if a of i plus 1 is in our hash map or not 
if it is not in hash map then we again increase increase the count of unique elements and also increase ai by one and then put that modified ai into our hash map okay and after that we will simply return whatever count we have got coming to the time complexity the time complexity of this approach will be order of n log n so this n log n is basically coming because of sorting okay sorting using merge sort basically uses n log n that is the most optimal time complexity of sorting the total space complexity will be order of n this is mainly because of storing n elements of our initial array and moreover hash map will also require order of n space so overall it is order of n extra space complexity is also order of n this is mainly because of using hash map okay so this hash max will contain at max order at max order of n elements so overall extra space complexity is order of n so thank you for watching and please like share and subscribe our channel